Hello and guten Tag. Due to popular demand, um, this is going to be a fusion video again. And it is about rendering. In the past I used fusion to render some images like this of my Arche keyboard. And um, this is basically 90% fusion and only maybe 10% of Photoshop afterwards. You can get pretty good renders straight out of fusion if you know how. <laughs> I'm by no means an expert on this, but... Um, I think I might share my knowledge with you in this video. Um, so, what could we render? On the search to an answer to this question, I thought about CPU coolers, since they are basically all kinds of materials and should give a pretty good render example. So, here we go. Here we are in Fusion, and this is a CPU cooler I quickly drew up. Um, I only had the rough dimensions of the die and the sockets and uh, the design is yeah, what I came up with in the moment and I don't know if this would be a good cooler but yeah. So um, as you can see the top is transparent but this is only because I selected the top and changed the opacity to uh, 50%. I will now change it back to 100% and then we can go into the render workspace. As you already see it looks a bit different. Um, this is very rough representation of um, what your final render will look like um, but really it's more a, a help to know what to expect but uh, not really what it will look like. So um, we have our main bar up here and this is basically all we will need. Um, this is the appearance, the setup scene, decals, and texture map control. And then we have in-canvas rendering, the settings for these, saving the in-canvas rendering, and the real render button. First thing we need to do is set up the material. So um, at the moment this is all the standard material, which is steel, I think. And for this we would have to hit this button or hit A. But you could also do this in the modeling workspace and that is what I will do because uh, I think it's a bit clearer <laughs> in this workspace. But you can do it in the rendering workspace at, at th as well. Does not make any difference. And as I see, I did not save when I had put in the screws. I will add these now and then go back to the rendering video, sorry. So here we are again, now with screws. So now let's get back to the materials. You can do a right click and set the material or just hit A. So let's hit A. Then this window pops up and there's our default material. And the first thing we want to do is make the top acrylic. So um, this would be, I think, under plastics, but you could also use the search. Acrylic, clear. And just pull it out onto the the object and make sure it's selected to body. If you only want one face of your model to be that particular material then you could say face but um, for all these things I will go with body or component. So the top is acrylic now so I will hide it and then we go into metals and I think I will make the the main uh, cooler uh, polished copper. You can also use um, brushed radial copper. This would have to be downloaded. Just hit this button, it will download instantly and um, you can use it from then on. If this does not show, just hit this button and it will appear. So now polished copper. Also hide this and then we have our gasket which is rubber um, let's search for rubber rubber hard soft uh, bumpy 
Um, I think I will go with rubber soft. And now you can see this is pretty much gray. And yeah, we will have to see in the rendering. But what you can do is if this is not black enough for you, you can uh, select this material. These are all the materials present in this uh, model. So right click and hit edit. And there you can see the color. So if you want a white rubber, you want the surface of a rubber, but um, not the color of black. So you can change that there. But um, I think a pretty dark gray is okay. You don't want this to be actually completely black or it will look a bit fake. Um, okay. So now that was the gasket and now the screws. Uh, <laughs> um, I want these to be, yeah, chrome, why not chrome? Um, mm, chrome or black chrome, I think black will look a bit better, maybe. These were the screws. And what's left is the main bracket. For this I will go with anodized aluminum. Aluminum. Anodized, mm, glossy or rough. I think um, I will go with rough. Again, use gray and then make it black. Edit. Again, not all the way black. Um, you can also go into advanced and have way more options about the roughness, um, other settings, but um, I don't want to change these at the moment. And yeah, then I go to close. All our materials are set. Now I can show every piece again. And yeah, now I change back to the rendering workspace as set. You could do this in the rendering, but um, I find this lighting a bit irritating for me. So yeah. Um, next, we need our setup. At the moment, you can see it's all gray. And yeah, there's light from one side which is okay, but um, you can tweak this to your liking by going to scene settings. And first of all, what you wanna do is choose an environment. So the base environment is uh, highlights and um, you could go with any of those and also download some. Um, maybe we'll try the photo booth. I did not try this for a while now. Um, again, drag and drop it and you see the lighting in the scene changed and if we go to settings and say environment here um, then you can see that it actually um, we have a big light on the top some darker spots yeah and you can see what the environment will look like um, this is a bit uh, light for me, I think I will go with uh, warm light, soft light, grid lights, might be cool. Yeah, why not? Try grid lights. And now you can see the setting has changed. There are our grid lights and if you uh, rotate your um, CPU cooler or whatever you have, you can see the reflections of the environment in your piece. Um, you have to decide if this is something you want or um, this might abstract a bit from the inside and make it hard to see. So I think this is a, not the best solution for me. So I might go with um, soft lights. Yeah. If you are into photography, you um, can have a look at the scenes and know what the setup basically is. This one is a big soft box. And um, we also can change the position of this softbox. If we go back to settings, we are happy with our environment. Let's go to settings. First, we can change the brightness, but I would recommend not changing it. On only if you have a very um, a very dark object, or if you um, if you have a light texture um, added to something. So um, I could place a cylinder here and. Give this a texture that it is that it becomes light. We might try that later. Um, okay, so now position. 
for posi position, position, you can change the rotation of your light. So um, the environment will rotate around your object. And so you can set the light to wherever you want to have the best result. For example, if you want to render it from this angle and you think it's a bit too bright, then you can change that or yeah. I will leave it like that. And um, what's next? Yeah, environment or a solid color as a background. If you choose solid color, you won't see the lights, but they are there and reflect in the part, but uh, not on the ground. And you can choose your color if you like it a bit darker, for example. And um, flattened ground. Flattened ground only applies, I think, if you have the ground plane off. No. Okay, whatever. Um, I don't really know. Uh, reflection, of course, is um, if you rotate it and you see reflection down here. Um, if you want that, there you have it. You can say how much reflection you want, uh, but I will turn it off. The next thing is again something about camera. So um, orthographic does look really unrealistic, so let's stay with perspective. And here's the focal length. Um, if you are into cameras, you know what to choose, maybe. You can go with the default if you don't know. Um, but I think I will go with... I like I like my 50mm uh, lens. So I'll go with 50. Gives it a bit uh, more dramatic look. Exposure. Uh, yeah. Can change this if you want, but... Um, same as lighting, only if you really need it. Um, you can see changes how bright it is. What was it? 9.5, I think. Yeah. Anyway, depth of field gives it this. Um, um, depth of field gives it a, the focus simulation, basically. So um, you can select where um, the focus point should be. So maybe right on the X, which you can't see at the moment. And um, then the front will be a bit blurry, the back will be a bit blurry, but you will only see this when you start rendering and not um, while setting it up, which makes it a bit hard. And you can set how much blur you want. Um, this is something that looks maybe a bit realis more realistic if you do it here than in Photoshop, but I will add it in Photoshop later. So I have a bit more control over it, I think. Also, it does not look as perfect. So um, that's it for for this um, for this panel. You can also set your viewport to a special ratio you want. So um, say four by three um, or view, viewport as aspect ratio. But if you say viewport as aspect ratio, you sometimes have a problem if you do a rendering that it might end up in the corner or something. I'm not not really happy with this option, so I will go with uh, four by three for this object. Four by three should be should be perfect. Um, you could do th sixteen by nine, but um, this is not a very wide object, so I will leave it as this and say close. Then decals. Um, if you, for example, have an object and want to add a branding, you could put your logo on a surface. I won't do this now. Um, it's pretty simple. Just hit decal, select the surface, select a picture, and then you can rotate it and scale it and position it as you like. But um, you will figure that out. So um, texture map control only really matters if you have a wood texture, I think, but I'm not an expert on that, so I will skip over this for now, but you can experiment. Just try it out and see what you get. So, in canvas rendering, if you click this button, it will start rendering in the canvas. And there you have a, there you will get a pretty good representation what your final render will look like if you hit rendering, but I don't really like the in canvas rendering it takes quite a while to get to a good result but um yeah 
most of the time I'm okay with this kind of preview and then I hit stop. Also for in-canvas rendering you have the option to uh, change to fast or advanced um, and lock the view so you can't rotate it while um, the rendering is active or it would re-render if you if you don't lock this and um, yeah okay but the real interesting part is rendering so and here are the rendering options um, you can choose some templates um, video does not really give a video it does give a still you can't really that's a that's a bit of a uh, thing I would add I would really add Fusion is rendering a video of your object there is an there is an animation panel where you can set up animations but there's no possibility to render a photorealistic video out of that that is something I'm really missing I love this feature in uh, SolidWorks but here it is not existent at the moment I think they're working working on something like that but I don't know custom image size there you can change your size um, aspect ratio um, exposure native advanced I leave this to native and then the file format you can say uh, you want a PNG a JPEG or a TIFF if you choose a, G a JPEG um, the quality will be good but um, you can't tick this box which might be important to you depends on your the purpose of your rendering but if you choose PNG or TIFF you can uh, check this box and then it will render but it will cut it out along the model so it will be a transparent background which can be really helpful if you plan on adding some features in Photoshop or replacing the background or something like this then this is really helpful but for now let's say we go with high quality JPEG then final resolution standard resolution final is the <laughs> of course the better resolution hence the uh, diamond and you can render in the cloud or local um, I don't know if you can render local with every license but I think so and if you have a student license or a startup license this costs you one credit and I think you have unlimited but you can only spend two at a time I don't really know the uh, model there but that's what it was in the past and yeah here you can see how long will it take you less than 20 minutes but I like to go for local render for a resolution like this you also have then the possibility to go to advanced and even crank up the quality but with every little bit of increase it just gets very much longer so I don't go higher than 80 most of the time for me I found out that since I have a GTX 1060 in this computer um, if I don't do a too high of a resolution and I go with with local render I'm a bit faster than with cloud rendering and so I will go and do this locally now and just hit render and then it will go and start rendering you have to know that if you increase the resolution um, the time that it will take might go up pretty dramatically and then cloud rendering is the way better option but I think I will pause this video and we'll come back when it's done so there we are again and it took two minutes now we can click on the magnification glass and there is our render and we can download this call it cooler let's open this in Photoshop everything I do in Photoshop you could also do in GIMP I think as you can see you can't zoom in much because um, this is already 100% so you might want to increase the re resolution a bit but for now this is pretty good for an example and what I would normally do is uh, maybe change a bit of the um, a bit add a bit more contrast sorry for the German menu but uh, I think you get what I do this is a, a curve and um, if you make an S curve then there is a bit more contrast <coughs> but this is no Photoshop tutorial for now so okay now I would like to have a bit more saturation and 
since the only color is the copper in this picture, I can just uh, crank this up. If you have another background and color, maybe, um, then you have to select what you want to colorize more. But for now, uh, yeah, that's our CPU cooler. So these were the very basics of um, rendering and fusion. I will do a second render with a table in the back and um, maybe add some lights. If you want to see this, stay here. If you don't want to see it, then I think you have most of the information of this video. So I go back to model and then I want to add a table. For this, I want a rectangle on this plane and make it quite big. As if you <coughs> don't do it big enough, um, you will see the uh, the borders of the table maybe. Um, extrude this, um, does not matter how thick you make it, I will make it now 10 and make it a new body. And there is our table. Again, hit A for the materials and we will go to wood, uh, unfinished maybe, cherry, walnut. Yeah, why not? Unfinished walnut. Yeah, I think this, I like the, I like the unfinished look with the finished cooler. So um, yeah, now I talked about emissive surfaces. Um, this is what you can use to make light bulbs or something like this. So for now I will um, yeah, just add a light here, maybe a blue one. And then I go hit A again and see a uh, blue LED. Sure. Um, you can se select the strength of your LEDs and again change the color. I want this to be blue. Okay. And seems to not really work like that. Roughness, reflection, emission, emissive, emissive. Ah, there is the emissive color. And there I can choose another color. And for this I will go with the blue. Ah, yeah, okay. And hit apply and cancel. So we have our first light source there and maybe hit A. This body and this time we will make this glowing red. Uh, we need a we only need to change it here, I think. Um, okay. Apply. Okay. And I have no idea why this uh, shows it not being red. At the blue version it worked. Yeah, maybe it works in rendering then. But um, for now this is good enough. I will move the X a bit. Um, and then we'll go back into the rendering and we can also move the cylinder a bit closer I think okay and then zoom in on our CPU and maybe yeah now our uh, main light source is where the X is so Go to setup. Okay, it does not really show it now, so we are about to find out if we hit render. So close, and for this, I'll go with the in canvas. Ah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> as you can already see, there's quite some different lighting. And now would be a good um, moment to reduce the light, I think, of uh, our setup. Stop this, go to settings, and maybe turn down the exposure, maybe. Let's try this. And to somewhere around 2000, maybe. 
Yeah. So um, I think I'll go for it and uh, do a render. Oh, no, 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 I did not mean to push render. Let's start another local render and um, we'll see what that will look like. As you can see, another one was added and both will be in there when it's finally done. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, now we're back. This took one hour, this render. It better be good. <laughs> That's that's why it's sometimes better to make a um, low resolution render first and only commit to the final render if you are satisfied. Let's call this even cooler. And here we are. Yeah, looking pretty, pretty good. So now we are at 50%. So when I zoom in, yeah, way more resolution. And um, yeah, again, what I would do is, uh, yeah, you can also use this to get more contrast. Uh, take the saturation a bit up, maybe. Pretty cool render, I think. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope I could help you with rendering and fusion. As you can see, it's pretty powerful. You have many options and can get some pretty cool results. If you have any questions to Fusion or to this video, leave them down in the comments. Now make something, modify something. I see you in the next video and bye.